All right, let's talk about 4.7, order of operations and complex fractions. So back in your review of Appendix B1, you were asked to take a look at order of operations, refresh your memory. It's a big topic, um, but it's not something that we were going to cover necessarily um, too far in depth. There's an expectation that you, you understand it coming in. And what you'll see me reference uh, a lot is this idea of PEMDAS uh, when we talk about order of operations and it stands for parentheses uh, exponents multiply uh, divide um, add and subtract and for the most part what we're going to deal with initially is this parentheses and exponents in this section then we'll start looking more at multiply and divide and including add and subtract. And one thing to understand is that multiply and divide, uh, yes, multiply comes before divide in PEMDAS. Similarly, add comes before subtract in PEMDAS. But when we do order of operations left to right, if I have 5 divided by 2 times 3, we actually divide first and we multiply next. We actually work left to right, just like how we read left to right. You're going to multiply or divide first, depending on what happens left to right. Same thing with addition and subtraction. If I have 5 minus 2 plus 3, I'm going to go ahead and subtract first and then add. Okay? So um, PEMDAS is a nice acronym for order of operations, but it's not everything. It also leaves out roots. Uh, you know, roots would go right here with exponents slash roots, like square root or cubed root. So it really could be permdas in some ways, but um, that's probably where your mind should be on this order of operations, and we'll get into it. You'll see this a few more times as we go through this lecture. So uh, it talks about, at this point in our study, we will apply the order of operations to expressions involving fractions. We begin with the review of fractional exp uh, expression containing exponents, Recall that to square a number, multiply the number times itself. For instance, 5 squared means 5 times itself 2 times. 5 times 5 equals 25. Uh, also, 5 to the third would be 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, right? Understand our exponential notation. The same process is used to square a fraction, meaning if we have 3 sevenths in parentheses squared, that's the same as 3 sevenths times 3 sevenths. We just write it twice and multiply twice because that's the exponent and then we take top times top stays on top three times three is nine bottom times bottom stays on bottom 49 and we get 949 so 3 7 squared is 949 and we're going to use this idea moving forward try to shore up um, you know some things that might be confusing we're going to right here in example one we're going to see some real pitfalls where students make a lot of mistakes but if we really pay attention and are really uh, uh, deliberate in what we do, we can, we can notice that we're getting set up for these pitfalls and then not fall for them, all right? So problem A says 2 fifths squared. Let's go through these problems. 2 fifths squared, this is the same as 2 fifths twice. So 2 fifths times 2 fifths, no problem. Top times top stays on top. 2 times 2 is 4. Bottom times bottom stays on bottom. 5 times 5 is 25. Pretty straightforward on A, 2 fifths squared. But B, here's one of the pitfalls. What do we do when there's a negative squared? Negative 2 fifths squared. And let me go ahead and show you, negative in the parentheses, is that the same as negative outside the parentheses? That's the pitfall we're going to learn here. We need to know the difference between these two, okay? So negative in the parentheses means I have negative 2 fifths times negative 2 fifths. This notation says I write it twice and multiply it. Two times, multiply it. So we have negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So this is going to be a positive answer. Top times top, 2 times 2 is 4. Bottom times bottom stays on bottom. 5 times 5 is 25. We get a positive 4 25ths when the negative's inside. Now let's look at C. I have a negative out front of 2 fifths squared. And the thing is, this is negative 2 fifths squared. 
just like this is negative two-fifths squared, right? We say them and they sound the same. We're going to find out we get very different solutions. What this minus sign out front means, I've got a minus out in front, and it stays out front, and then I have two-fifths times two-fifths. Notice the negative doesn't get squared. It's just out front, so it stays out front. Two-fifths squared is two-fifths times two-fifths, and I get a negative four twenty-fifths because two times two is four, five times five is twenty-five, and don't lose your negative. Keep that negative. So notice negative two-fifths squared gives us a positive answer, and negative out in front of two-fifths squared gives us a negative answer. This is something that you definitely want in your notes. Um, typically when I do this example, I think we've seen it before uh, early on, was basically the idea of negative 2 squared is negative 4 and negative 2 squared is positive 4. This is the type of stuff that causes us problems, especially moving forward when we start doing substitution that with negative numbers and we square it. We need to know is it a negative outcome or a positive outcome. Very important to, to uh, understand the difference. I'm going to make some space here and look at D. D says negative one-fourth in parentheses cubed. Well, that means it's negative one-fourth times negative one-fourth times negative one-fourth. Three times. One, two, three times. One, two, three times. Negative, negative, negative. That's an odd number of negatives. I'm going to have a negative result. Top times top times top. One times one times one stays on top one and then bottom times bottom times bottom four times four times four is 64 so we get a negative one over 64 for negative one fourth cubed all right again with all of these videos I'm gonna go quickly expecting you to pause rewind uh, rewatch as many times as necessary I'm not gonna go as a, at a typical pace that we would see in class okay no reason to record dead time on YouTube. So let's look at example two. Let's apply some order of operations. We have parentheses, negative two fifteenths times three fourths. We can go ahead and simplify what's in the parentheses and then do our exponent next. So I'm going to take negative two fifteenths times three fourths. I think to myself, negative times a positive is going to be a negative result. Two times three, top times top is six. 15 times 4, uh, I get my calculator out, I don't know my 15s, 15 times 4 is 60, so we get negative 6 over 60, and keep that squared, don't lose it, so we have negative 6 over 60 squared, I can go ahead and reduce this, I notice 6 comes out of both, I can go ahead and reduce before I square it, so what this becomes is negative 6 divided by 6 is 1, 60 divided by 6 is 10, so this is the same as negative 1 tenth squared. My notation says I write whatever the base is twice and multiply it. So negative 1 tenth one time, negative 1 tenth another time. I have a negative times a negative, it's going to be a positive answer. Top times top is 1, bottom times bottom, 10 times 10 is 100 and we get 1 over 100. Positive 1 over 100. Rewind that and rewatch it if you need to. Hit pause, work it through. Um, let me know if I made a mistake. Let's look at 5. Negative 7 eighths times 4 over 35 cubed. So I know that in my answer I got a negative times a positive, so this is going to be a negative number. I'm going to go ahead and reduce inside here. I'm going to reduce first because I see a 4 on top and an 8 on bottom. I know 4 comes out of both. So 4 divided by 4 is 1 here, and 8 divided by 4 is 2 here. I know 7 goes into 35, so I'm going to take 7 divided by 7, and that's 1, and 35 divided by 7, and that's 5. So I've reduced first. Now I can multiply. 1 times 1 is 1, bottom times bottom, 2 times 5 is 10. So I've got negative 1 tenth, and then keep that cube symbol. Don't
don't lose it. Negative 1 tenth cubed. All right? So I didn't do 7 times 4 is 28, and 8 times 35 is whatever that is, and reduce next. I reduced first uh, and then multiplied, which is okay to do. So now I have to interpret a base to an exponent. This means I write negative 1 tenth three times. Negative 1 tenth, negative 1 tenth, negative 1 tenth. Three times. Negative, negative, negative. Negative times negative times negative is an odd number of negatives. I'm going to have a negative answer. Top times top times top. One times one times one stays on top. One. Bottom times bottom times bottom, 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So I get negative 1 over 1,000. All right, now let's apply it. Let's take it one step further. Let's add an operation. So it says write the answer as a fraction. Well, PEMDAS tells us parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. I see an addition. I see a multiplication. I don't see any parentheses to uh, simplify. These are simple. Three and three fifths is simplified. Negative ten ninths is simplified. I don't see any exponents. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply. I'm going to go ahead and write one half out front. But now I'm going to show the multiplication next. To multiply two fractions, I got to make sure they're both fractional form and not mixed number. I see right here. I have this mixed number. So I'm going to make it improper. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3 is 18. So I've got 18 over 5 times this negative 10 ninths. So there's a negative out in front there. So this is going to end up being negative. I'm going to reduce inside because I don't want to, you know, I see 18 and 9. 9 goes into 18, top and bottom. So 18 divided by 9 is 2. 9 divided by 9 is 1. I just divide it by the same number. 9 goes into 9, 9 goes into 18. I see 5 and 10. I know 5 goes into 10. 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 10 two times. And now top times top, 2 times 2 is 4. Bottom times bottom, 1 times 1 is 1. And there's a negative times a positive, so this is negative. And I've got this 1 half out front. So now I'm going to multiply. Oops, sorry. I'm not going to multiply. Let me undo this. I have 1 half plus negative 4 over 1. So how would we address this? Now I'm going to go ahead and add. Now if I have a plus minus next to each other, that's the same as minus. It's just the same as minus. Okay? So this is the same as 1 half minus 4, or 1 half minus 4 over 1. I'm going to stack them because I, that's what I, how I like to do my addition or subtraction of fractions. I need a common denominator between 2 and 1. To get a common denominator, I can just uh, multiply 2 times 1. My common denominator is 2. The top fraction doesn't change. The bottom fraction to get to 2, 1 times 2 gave me 2, so I'm going to take this times 2, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, and 1 minus 8 is minus 7 halves. Okay? And it just says write it as a fraction, so we have negative 7 halves. You could write that as negative 3 and a half if you'd like, uh, as an improper fraction. Again, addition and multiplication. I'd encourage you to hit pause and try this on your own. I'm going to go through it very quickly, but let's see if we get to the same spot. So I'd encourage you to hit pause here. Again, we're going to multiply first. So I'm going to have 2 thirds plus whatever this result is. I have a mixed number, so I better make it improper. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15. So I've got 15 over 4 times a negative 8 over 5. I see things that can reduce again. I see 15 and 5, 15 on top, 5 on bottom. Those are both divisible by 5. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. 5 divided by 5 is 1. I see 4 and 8. 4 goes into 8 two times. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 
and I've got two-thirds plus three times two on top is six, one times one on bottom is one, and this has one negative times a positive, so it's negative six over one. Again, I'm going to stack these because that's how I like to do my addition and subtraction of fractions. And my common denominator between 3 and 1 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. How do I go from 3 to 3 times 1? So I stick with 2 thirds. That doesn't, top one doesn't change. From 1 to 3 is times 3, so I better do that on top. 6 times 3 is 18. I can go ahead and steal that negative sign. Okay, so now I've got the same denominator, numerator, and uh, numerator get combined. 2 minus 18 is negative 16. So we get negative 16 thirds. All right, the next step we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give you um, some uh, letters, throw some variables in there, and we're just going to ask you to do a simple substitution and then uh, evaluate the expression. So we've got 2 divided by y times z, but we know that y is minus 14 thirds, so that means this is going to be minus 14 thirds, and z is minus 1 third, so z is going to be minus 1 third, and this stays 2 uh, divided by minus 14 thirds times minus 1 third. Notice I do have a multiplication here. The problem is my PEMDAS tells me to multiply first and then divide if I don't understand it correctly. The reality is, it might as well say PEDMAS, we multiply and divide left to right. And that means if I'm going to work left to right here, this is what I'm going to do first. Just because we hear multiply then divide does not mean that's what we should do working left to right. That's a that's a common mistake that students make and it costs them. Working left to right, I've got 2 divided by negative 14 thirds. I act like this part doesn't even exist. What's 2 divided by negative 14 thirds? Well that's the same as 2 over 1 times, I'm going to do keep, change, flip, and I'm going to make it negative 3 over 14. Top times top, 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times 14 is 14, and I get a negative. So that's the result. 2 divided by negative 14 thirds is negative 6 over 14. And then I still have to bring down this times minus 1 third. Because all this minus 6 14 is is replaces this rectangle right here. It's still got to be multiplied by minus 1 third at the end. Okay. Well, a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive result. So I've got a negative 6 14 times a negative 1 third, so I'm going to end up with a positive result. Top times top, 6 times 1 is 6. Bottom times bottom, 14 times 3. I don't know my 14s very well, but I do have a calculator. 14 times 3 is 42. So I get 6 over 42. I do know that they're both even, so I can divide them both by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3, 42 divided by 2 is 21, and those both divide by 3, so I'm just reducing, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 21 divided by 3 is 7, and we get 1 over 7, or 1 7. Okay, again that's very quick, that's a very quick explanation, I'd encourage you to go back and try it on your own, rewind it a little bit, try it on your own, or pause it as I go forward, but, um, you know, I wouldn't go this fast in class, but, again, for the video, there's no reason to record dead time. Let's look at 7. Evaluate 3 times A divided by B. When A is negative 17th, sorry, A is negative 7 fifteenths, and B is 21 over 10. So 3 times a over b is going to become 3 times, sorry, a divided by b, 3 times negative 7 fifteenths divided by 21 tenths. So PEMDAS tells me to do 3 times a first, or 3 times negative 7 fifteenths. So I'm going to do this part right here, and I'll divide last. 
So 3 over 1, I make 3 a, a fraction, times negative 7 fifteenths, top times top, 3 times 7 is 21, one bottom times bottom, 1 times 15 is 15, and I got a positive 3 times a negative 7 fifteenth, that's going to be a negative. I still have to divide it by 21 over 10. So I'm going to keep, change, flip. Minus 21, 15 is my keep. Change to multiplication, flip. I'm going to reduce because I've got 21 on top, 21 on bottom. Those cancel to 1 and 1. I've got 15 and 10. Those divide by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Negative times a positive is a negative, and 1 times 2 on top is 2. 3 times 1 on bottom is 3. So I've got negative 2 thirds. Make sure to try that on your own. All right, last topic we're going to see in this section is simplifying a complex fraction. Now, complex definitely looks complex. And I don't, I don't mean to make it seem like they're simple. If, the op, if we're talking about complex, the opposite would be like simple, right? Simple versus complex. I don't want to say these are simple, but they're just, they just look more complex than maybe they should be. For instance, I can tell you that this problem is the exact same problem as 3 fifths divided by m over 10. If I gave you this problem, you'd say that doesn't look complex. That just looks like a division problem. Keep, change, flip. We can come up to with a solution. Okay? Same thing here. If you look at this, if you really look at this, this is really a fraction 3 fifths divided by fraction m over 10. <coughs> and when it's stacked vertically, yeah, we've got 1, 2, 3 division symbols, 1, 2, 3, 4 different items. Yeah, it looks complex, right? It does. A fraction for the numerator, a fraction for the denominator, that is complex. But the reality is it's just a fraction divided by a fraction. And when we write it horizontally, we gain a lot more confidence. All of a sudden, we know what to do. We keep 3 fifths. We change division. We flip fraction. Keep change flip. And top times top, 3 times 10 is 30. Bottom times bottom, 5 times m is 5m, and 30 and 5 reduce, 5 goes into 30 six times, 5 goes into 5 one time, and we end up with just 6 on top and m on bottom. Now that's an answer that doesn't might not seem like a, an, an answer that's acceptable, but it's the correct answer. We don't care what m is, and I told you at some point that, you know, when we start getting letters out there initially, it can be intimidating. But we actually tend to, pref I mean, it gets a lot easier. Once you get some confidence in them, it's pretty, uh, it becomes pretty simple, okay? Uh, we actually look forward to having more letters. They're easier to deal with the numbers, okay? So don't let complex fractions freak you out. Let's look at some more. 5 over 6 over y over 21, 1, 2, 3, division symbols, uh, a fraction, divided by a fraction, it looks complex. But if I write it horizontally as a fraction divided by a fraction, it's not so bad. Now I just have, now I'm just dividing fractions. So I keep 5, 6, I change division to multiply, and I flip 21 over y. Keep, change, flip. 5 times 21, I don't know what that is, but I've got a calculator. 5 times 21 is 105. So I get 105, bottom times bottom, 6 times y is 6y. I don't know if uh, this might reduce. Let's see if 6 goes into 105. Uh, let's see if 3 goes into 105. I bet it does. There we go. So if I take 3, if I divide the top by 3 and the bottom by 3, 105 divided by 3 is 35. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Keep that y underneath. So this reduces to 35 over 2y. Let's make it look a little bit more complex. Okay? 
Um, so now what we want to do is still understand this as a fraction divided by a fraction, except now we have to go ahead and simplify our fraction and then, uh, so our numerator, and then leave this division symbol for last and then we want to simplify this fraction as well. So we basically deal with this as like two separate problems. We're going to go ahead and simplify two-fifths minus one-third and then we'll come back and simplify this. This result is our numerator, this result is our denominator. Okay, well how do we deal with these fractions? Um, I like to stack them. I like to write two-fifths minus one-third. Common denominator, five times three is uh, 15. Common denominator, 15. Five to 15 was times three, so I gotta take two times three is six. Three to 15 is times five, so I gotta take the top times five. One times five is five. And six minus five is one. Keep the denominator. So now I've got a one over 15 on top over so now I've done this is 1 15th. I've simplified it to 1 15th. Now I have to simplify 1 minus 3 fifths. So 1 minus 3 fifths. That's not how I wanted it. Uh, 1 minus 3 fifths. Uh, 1 over 1 common denominator is going to be 5. So I'm going to have 5 over 5 minus 3 over 5. That's just 2 over 5. So this is 1 15th and this is 2 over 5. So my top was 1 15th, my bottom was 2 over 5. I just treated them like separate problems, and now I'm going to bring them together with this division symbol. So all of that is really 1 15th on top over 2 fifths on bottom. Well, that's a fraction divided by a fraction. <coughs> if I wrote it this way, it wouldn't be scary at all. If I wrote it horizontal, you wouldn't wouldn't bother you at all. You'd say, oh, this one's easy, because I know how to keep, change, flip, and top times top is 5, bottom times bottom is 30, those reduced by 5, 5 divided by 5 is 1, 30 divided by 5 is 6, we get 1 sixth. It's a very good problem. Uh, this one's going to work the same way. Uh, last idea. Um, last idea I want to wind this video down. Uh, simplifying algebraic expressions. Uh, this is just like adding like terms back in um, the B1 review, appendix B1 review. We had things like if you had 4k minus 2k plus k, uh, because they're all the same like terms, k, 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 4k minus 2k combines to 2k plus 1k, 2k plus 1k is 3k. You might as well be saying apples. Four apples minus two apples plus one apple, okay? Same thing here. As long as our variables are identical, uh, they stay. They don't like, they don't cancel out, okay? We keep them. We keep them like they're labels. So how do we deal with this? Well, we're just going to deal with the fractions. Two-fifths minus one-third we're going to get common denominators of 15. 5 to 15 was times 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. 3 to 15 was times 5, 1 times 5 is 5. 6 minus 5 in the numerator is 1. Keep the denominator 15, and then we can go ahead and add back that label or that variable x. All right? We're just going to combine like terms. Here we're dealing with y's, so they're like terms, so we'll go ahead and combine them. Uh, we can put these two numbers together, 7 fourths uh, plus 2 thirds. So 7 fourths plus 2 thirds. Common denominator is going to be, uh, I don't know why I put those equals. Sometimes I put equal sign in there. Uh, you can, sometimes I forget. 3 times 4 is 12, so our common denominator is 12. Uh, to go from 4 to 12, I took it times 3, so 7 times 3 is 21. 3 to 12 is times 4, so 2 times 4 is 8. So now we have our common denominators. 21 plus 8 is 29. Keep our denominator. 
and then add back the fact that there are a y, whatever that is. Like I said, if we had 7 fourths apples plus 2 thirds apples, we'd have 29 twelfths apples. Don't get too caught up in that, in those like terms, um, but get used to them because you're going to see a lot of them moving forward, especially in chapter 10. Uh, go ahead and watch this again, rewind it, pause it, do what you need to do, and let me know if you have any questions.